Slava Borschev. Slava Claus. Thank you. Thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. I um I've become a fan I've become a fan of yours because I think you're one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC and you just so happen to be in the region. And so I, wa- I really wanted to have you on your on the show. I'm also really interested in your background. I think you have a really a really amazing um, intriguing background. It's interesting to me. Um, and we'll get further into that, but I first I just have to ask the obvious question. Why Slava Claus? You're not fat. You don't have a big white beard. Like you're not from the North Pole. Yeah, that, first of all, I appreciate for everything what you just said, and uh, uh, I'm glad to be here too. Uh, the Slava Claus, I think it came from you. Uh, I, sorry, I'm not thinking. I know it came from Uriah. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I still believe he just uh, playing around with my name because Slava Santa. Maybe for him it sounds like kind of similar, but he said. Um, at the beginning, he said it because uh, I used to. It's actually part of Russian culture. When you go, when when someone is inviting you and you guest, uh, you usually have to bring something with you. And I actually used to have uh, some problem with that because uh, I have no money for for a while here. And when people invited me, I feel so. I always felt so bad. And sometimes I even like try to sneak away from that. <laughs> like, oh, sorry, like I have to do something. Uh, but. Uh, my first trip, I was able to bring some gift, and here I said every time when when I show up, I always bring something to him. So, what did you bring on your first? Was it a hat? When yeah, it was a Russian. Uh, like, what's a Russian hat? S- like the stereotype hat. Is, is it a Soviet well, hat? <laughs> okay, so not the thing that Habib wears. No, no, no. The the, the, the thing what Habib uh, wears it's a um, uh, papaha. It's it's a different one. That's uh, more like. Caucasian culture, more okay. like uh, Cossacks culture, mm-hmm. but uh, which I bring is just uh, like re- uh, regular sol- soldiers one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does he wear it? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably as tall as him. I can I, say that because I'm short. <laughs> yeah, I said just because it's like you know it's super stereotype. It could be funny. Yeah, it's like cool. <laughs> it worked, man. <laughs> yeah. You're here. Yeah. So um, you're from Russia. You you are from a city that I find. In- I'm really, um, I've, I know a lot about the history of your city. Um, it's called Volgograd now, right? Yes. But it was Stalingrad. Yep. And um, when I was reading about you and I saw you on some of the things that you've done on, on YouTube and you talk about, you know, your background there in Volgograd. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know that probably the bloodiest, worst battle in the history of human warfare happened in Stalingrad, happened in the, in the city that you grew up. Um, it was five months, I think it was like five months, one week, three days of hand-to-hand um, brutality, hand-to-hand. Um, yeah, most things it, about like two millions from one side and two millions from other side. It was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, so is that what two million from each side yep. died. Um, I, I read stories about it. I read diaries from some of the soldiers that fought there. And the only way I can think about it is if today you took this office building that we're sitting in and you put in a thousand of one side and a thousand of another side in this building and said, okay, one of you side, take the building. It was like that type of hand to hand in every building that was still left standing from months and months of, you know, aerial bombardment. But those were the types of fights, the worst type of fighting that humans can do to each other. So, so like, how is it? How is it now? How was it growing up there? Did you did they did you learn a lot about that? Yeah, yeah. I I was, uh, and I'm still one of the person who always appreciated. Uh, unfortunately, like ninety percent right now, like maybe not ninety, maybe less, but a lot of people, uh, they don't really care. Uh, of Russians know, who live there? Yeah, who live in, in, this, in this city. I believe some of them even not really remember. <laughs> what, what, no, we really? still have some like dates which should remind you because uh, at least uh, tw- twice per, per year uh, we call this city Stalingrad officially. It's mm-hmm. like uh, February uh, 2nd and uh, May 9th. There was a Stalingrad battle and uh, Victory Day. So uh, at least two days, it's officially like if you mm-hmm. check an internet, it's officially when we call Volgograd Stalingrad. Oh. Yes, and uh, like we still have some parade. I mean, the, I think they talk about this at school, but people just uh, most of people the young never, kids, they, yeah, they not not appreciate it. Especially we call this generation who, who were born uh, right after 
USSR collapsed it. I'm actually part of this generation. We call Pepsi Cola. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Those because, are the post-Soviet Union. Yeah, because they technically already never care about the history, all this communist part. Like they, they like just it's already kind of mix of West culture and mix of like stupid. Uh, like patriotic stuff which all oh, we're Russians we're best of the best but why like you you, you don't know anything about your culture or why we're best <laughs> why we're better than anybody else yeah. so so are there any are so so does, do the Pepsi Cola guys do they get along with the babushkas or is there like a little bit of a <laughs> is there a divide there no Pepsi Cola guys is, you know it's kind of like when a uh, uh, Russian Russian people who grew up in a like only in American movies, uh, like mm-hmm. not only American, just West, mm-hmm. West culture. Kind of, have you seen the movie Malibu Most Wanted? No, yeah, that <laughs> no movie. but I, I'm familiar yeah. with it. The... when the rich guy was yeah. acting like guy from Hato. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, kind yeah. of like this. Like That's when they, what they yeah, when are. People, they, yeah, they, they're Russians, but they try acting like. Yeah, like they're in they, track yeah, suits. They, yeah, 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 they, yeah, they're yeah. wearing the. the Russian rap. Yeah, Russian rap. Yeah, it's actually pretty it's big. Big genre. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Huh? But some some of them like not that bad. It's already become kind of unique, unique, unique. But uh, mm-hmm. back in the day, it was just copy. Like they, they just did the same thing. What did they listen to before the Pepsi Cola? I guess it was at the old Russian like war, Soviet like orchestra. I, I'm not sure. Being honest, I think you you USSR. Uh, they used to steal a lot of um, uh, pop music. From uh, West okay. World too, they did some parody. Not always, mm-hmm. and sometimes they did even better than West. <laughs> but mm-hmm. but still, like I mean, they always was exchanging. That never mm-hmm. was like that far away. Like, yeah, uh, we still have. We used to have how it calls. Uh, uh, when uh, before before it goes away, it's, so we had some special people who ch- make sure it's like political correct. Like they can show it. Censors. Sensors, yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah they, 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 we still had it. I mean, we we'll probably have it in, even now. I'm not sure, but now it's kind of messed up. Yeah. You know, the funny part right now, I, I believe Russia, one of the most anti-Soviet country in the world, because it's they try to get rid of a Soviet legacy. They try, yeah, pre- like pretend to be like, oh, the communist part was so, so bad, like this. So, so do you ever do you watch YouTube much? Yeah, 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 there's a there is a YouTube channel. I, I'm probably gonna mess his name up. He's an English gentleman, is and he has a show called Bald and Broke. Have you seen that? Or Broken Bald, Bald and Broke. He's a uni- he's a it, he's a he's British, and he travels in the old Soviet um, areas. Like he'll go to he'll go to Russia, but he'll go to like the places that are far away where they still are strong, right? And they still have the statues up, they still have the murals out and they still have you know the the hero um you know statues so it's kind of interesting because i think and you tell me if i'm wrong um when you get away from the big cities out into the place maybe where change hasn't come as fast do you find that they still hold on to some of that soviet stuff i don't know how exactly it's going on but uh, thank god we still have it we still have uh all mon- not not all but most of monuments uh, mm-hmm. all them like uh, it's kind of like, you know, government kind of play this game when they need to use a USSR legacy. They go, oh, look, at it's we are. We're like, so we it's are. like America. Yeah, yeah. But the, when they want to get rid of that, it's always oh, bad. It's bad. Yeah. It's kind of like all what USSR did bad. They said, yeah, USSR did bad. But if something USSR did well, they said, oh, Russia did it well. Like, yeah. Wait a second. That wasn't Russia. That was USSR. It's like two different countries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, if we go back to grow, grew up in uh, Stalingrad, like I always felt like a part of this story. I always appreciate it. Uh, I, and the, uh, you know, the technically this, if you remember the history, the town was destroyed. Mm. Correct. Like this, Rubble. Each mm. how it called, breaks mm-hmm. was destroyed, and uh, there was a like it's a real story. I believe it was about like official one hundred meters, uh, and the, the city was done. Like just last one hundred meters until Volga River, and that's it. And they already called to Germany, the Germans, the Nazis. Right. They called and said, "Yeah, we celebrate victory. Whoa, everything great." And they never took this last one hundred. They were down to like <laughs> an island right there, and yeah. that guy actually that your your military. Uh, I don't know if he's. I think he might have been a general or a colonel. I'm not sure, but the officer who held it 
Like I hope he's still. I will probably talk about uh, Pavlov House, which is very very famous. He was a surgeon. Okay. Yeah, but but it's a different story. It's a, yeah, he it's a one little house which is never was taken by Nazis for all Stalingrad battle, which except this little <laughs> little <laughs> island. Yeah, that little Everything island was conquered. Yeah, but still, like I mean, they never took this last one hundred meters. And uh, the Pauls was uh, surrendered, surrendered, and uh, mm-hmm. I mean, there's a great story. I always was motivated by that. Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, we have uh, great monuments. We have Mamaev Kurgan. If you go there, if you ever go to my hometown, uh, mm-hmm. you have to go to this place. It's the main part, main things that you have to see. It's uh, like um, you know, how he calls it, stairs, ladder, mm-hmm. uh, the the long one. You you walk like this. The ramp. No, no, that's uh, when you when you step to climb up stairs. <laughs> stairs, yeah, mm-hmm. yes. Yeah, so you go up, and there's many, many different uh, kind of monuments, statue, which mm-hmm. remind you about war. Some great music, and uh, some main statue that's uh, very huge. It's bigger than uh, Liberty State, the, um, the uh, Statue of Liberty, yeah, Mother Mother mm-hmm. Motherland Cold. Oh, it's like, yeah. I think I've seen pictures of that. Yes, actually, yes, yes. and uh, it's beautiful. Actually, the great story too. It's um. It's it wasn't just one monument. There was a, uh, the idea was I think in Mag- Magnitogorsk there was uh, two guys creating a sword, uh, like a statue, a monument. When the two two big men created the sword, in my town the lady rises up this sword to let know we, we we're going to fight. And in uh, Berlin, is the the man hold this sword down and and like that's it. The war is over. That was that was the, the idea. Got it. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with that one, so that's good to know. I will look that up after the show, too. We'll probably have a picture up here. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of interesting because for those who aren't aware, um, Stal- the Battle of Stalingrad, in addition to being the most bloody, brutal battle in the history of warfare, was also the turning point in World War II. Um, it was because those Russians held to the bitter end, man. The Germans actually thought the war was, they thought they had won. They thought that they had taken Stalingrad. And then winter, <laughs> and then winter came. How bad is the winter there? It's, I, I, I guess the Germans just weren't okay, used to it. I, I tell the truth. I believe it's like, no, I'm not belief. I, I know this kind of big bullshit. I mean, really? About the really? Russian winter. Yeah, about the <laughs> Russian winter general. Yeah, of course, it's, 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 it's. Yeah, of course, it has some part of true. We have sometimes uh-huh. our, our winter is pretty cold. But this is not the reason. I mean, like, uh, I get cold. Like, I hate cold. Like, there's no way I go back to home. No way. I want to live in California because I love the weather. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, no, I don't think it's... Uh, but but exactly in this year, yeah, there was pretty cold winter. I think we had uh, the same cold winter only once for last something 30 years so maybe oh, really? more. Yeah, and I remember this, uh, the schools was shut down. It's not that cold for Siberia, for example, but yeah, yeah. for our area, yeah, it's pretty cold. We, we actually the our weather, the Volgograd weather, is terrible. Like in the summertime, it's very too hot. A lot of mosquitoes, bugs, like Bible story. Mm-hmm. There's too many of them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, in the winter time, it's really cold. Uh, but the most I think the reason why it's cold is because of wind. Ah. Yeah, it's it's a desert kind of like you know steppe. Yeah, yeah. It's, yes. it's, it's not uh-huh. that much forest. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's so cold, but not because of it's crazy, crazy freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so the reasons the German loss wasn't because of the winter; it's because no, the because Russians kicked their ass. Surrounded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> surrounded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, there is many reasons. I I when I said I was motivated, what people did, uh, but. I was motivated not for fighting. Mm-hmm. I just motivated well, like when people like stay on uh, what they believe when they like when mm-hmm. they fighting uh, when they never give up whatever happened. Also, not, I kind of sometimes as I get older, I'm scared what you have to put inside of the man head to do what Nazi did. I mean, like Nazi fought really hard too. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not only Russians fought. And when when you think why Russians, I mean, Soviet people fought that mm-hmm. hard, it, it makes sense because they're fighting for survival. But why Nazi fought that bad? That's well, this part you never understand. This is something yeah. really scary about human being. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And when yeah. I believe the stories like Stalingrad should teach us never, never again, again. Yeah, yeah. like please, never again. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that that background kind of ingrains itself in the people there? So I know they may not know it, but do you think there's an, an innate 
do you think there's something inside of them that instills in them this fortitude? Maybe it's the weather. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's that wind. But do you think the people there are tougher? Mm, I don't know. It's hard to say, especially now. I think right now, soft. the Russia, it's like this, just a copy. It's the same like America, but poor. But there's no <laughs> no difference. Like between, yeah, we still have some cultural yeah, difference, yeah. of course, because it's thousands mm -hmm. of years Russian culture. Right, right. Like we have like great literature, like our like uh, habits. Uh, mm -hmm. we, like for example, we not smile with no reason. Like in Russia, if you smile with no reason, they think you're dummy. Like something wrong with you. And mm -hmm. this maybe possibly could be a reason to fight. You know, like <laughs> if you if you just uh, like man you look seem like you. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you man mm -hmm. looks like you meet the other man looks kind of like you too and mm -hmm. smile to him you might the other man might can ask him, what are you laughing for like, yeah what, yeah why are you, you think, laughing you, at you, me you, you think i'm funny or what like what's your problem like, <laughs> like yeah. everything's out of good yeah. out of good fellas yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah kind of like that. okay let me tell you something man like <laughs> i had a run-in with a russian dude i didn't know he was russian until he got out of his car so uh this was like six years ago and i had like a fancy car and he had a fancy car and I had come from the gym, and so I was all pumped up, and I wanted to go look at a fountain pen, and he was parked in front of a jewelry store, and his car was running, and he wasn't moving. I think because I was all pumped up from the gym, I wasn't thinking straight, and so I, I parked my car, right? And I kept looking at him like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go? Why aren't you moving, right? And I didn't know he was Russian at this point, right? I didn't know anything. And then the guy gets out of his car. He was dressed a little differently. You know what I mean? He was dressed kind of Russian. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I actually <laughs> you know, really know yeah, what I'm he saying. Was, he was a little Russian. And he gets out of his car and he starts like, what are you doing, motherfucker? You don't know me. You don't know me. I'll kill you. I was like, damn, dude. I was just like one in the parking space. And he's like, you know, we're in Russia, we'll kill people like you. And I was like, damn, man. <laughs> like, you know what? Honestly, he was right. I shouldn't have been, I was the dick, right? I was the asshole because I, I was hopped up on pre-workout. Um, but yeah, that gave me a little like insight. This guy wasn't playing. Like he was like, he was in it to win it over that parking spot. I just like said, okay, man. And I drove around the block and he was gone. So we both, I gave him an out. You know what I mean? He had his out. He took it. It all worked out. But how typical is that? <laughs> yeah, we have... I think the reason why we have that many uh, fights on the roads because uh, Russians have no like that easy gun laws like in the USA. <laughs> For example, can you see any fights on the roads in Texas? Probably impossible because everybody has a gun. <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, you good, bro? Oh, sorry, sorry, bro. You good? <laughs> How are you doing? Howdy, oh. all. <laughs> yeah, but in Russia, they they, they don't, and of yeah. course, they start like fighting right away. Yeah, this is pretty mm -hmm. common. We we pretty rude, and the worst part, we proud of that. Proud? He was yeah. proud. Yeah, we proud. Oh, yeah. so rude. But yeah. I also think we, we, not only Russians, all of people on this earth, we victims of uh, stereotypes. Mm -hmm. we, You're right. we even start believing the all this, and uh, maybe Russians a little bit more than anybody else because, for example, I find out that the association with Russian and bears, like Russians and bears, it was a uh, West propaganda. But now we use it as it's something cool. Like, look, <laughs> you, yeah, we're a real Russian bear. <laughs> look at us. Like, we're slow, but we're yeah, running yeah, fast. Yeah, we're like, yeah, just yeah. scary dudes. Yeah. But <laughs> that was, I, I found out that was came from uh, Great Britain. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they start uh, propaganda like, oh, like uh, Russia, it's a bear in Europe. Like, they wild. they wild and scary. You never know what to expect from them. But now Russians feel like it's something what they can proud of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, classic. See, and th this is maybe a little bit special but the thing mm -hmm. is uh, Russians are the same people like anybody else yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I travel a lot I travel enough to understand yeah we, we, we're all the same like if you take a workman from uh, uh, USA a workman from Russia there's no any difference especially now because we're not socialists anymore yeah. but uh, the Pepsi Cola generation yeah as, as Pepsi Cola they probably know more American culture than some Americans. I know. They, <laughs> I, I, I said the rap on purpose because I was watching a show. On, I think it was on that bald and broke or whatever it was. And uh, he was in Moscow and he was going in um, kind of walking into some clubs and it was there was rap playing, but it was Russian lyrics. Yeah, I see. And I was like, what is that? So that's what broke me into the Russian rap. Like it's a real thing. They're playing <laughs> it in the clubs. No, some of them really good because, you know, I think 
in Russia, it's already this is part of Russian culture. This the words and the meaning more important than just music. I still think like West culture, like the more focus on how it sound like. Mm -hmm. It's very important, like the mix between. Yeah, it should have some sense, but the music still more important. But for Russians, it, like the poems, kind of a little bit more, mm -hmm. the lyric more important. The what 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 exactly it's meaning, and that's why mm -hmm. some Russian rap like really cool. And like, it's really, really popular like it. too, yeah. right? There. I'm not sure how big is that because you know it's uh, I could be uh, it's hard for me to be objective enough like yeah, so I, that's true. for Good me point. yes I feel like it's like it's yeah, yeah, pretty but popular it's your world. but maybe if you ask my grandma she said no it's bullshit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like it depends who you ask but it's hard <laughs> I think you're right hope you keep it that way because when you know when rap started here it was lyric driven and it was meaning driven and it was it was a statement. It was statement driven, and now you're right. That's a that's a very good point. Now it has morphed into producer driven, and now it's about oh that vibe. Where before it wasn't about a vibe, right? Uh, it was about the message. In fact, one of the biggest song, one of the biggest rap songs in the beginning was called "The Message." <laughs> um, so anyway, I hope you guys keep your your message. Sorry, we're music. not already. Like if you take the new school, new generations, that's they're already cool. moving on. Yeah, they're doing uh, <laughs> even worse. They just. Following mm -hmm. the West, uh, like uh, wherever a famous couple hip -hop months artist, behind, they, yes, and they do the same thing but Fuck. worse in Russian yeah. language. Yeah, <laughs> uh, well, um, Russian fighters, man, you guys are like on the up. So I was looking over, you know, I was looking over things. You got like Peter Yan, of course, you have Habib, Fedor, right? Who's the other guy? Like, God, he's he's living in Sweden. Um, I can never. Chimaev. Yeah, Chimaev. That, Chimaev. that guy. Everybody's afraid of him. Apparently, mm -hmm. you. What? What is it with these? With these Russian fighters? Is it? Is it the culture? Are Are there programs that get to the fighters early? What? Why are we seeing so many Russian fighters at this high level? And believe me, that's only t tipping the iceberg. I just can't pronounce the other names. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, but they're all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I see um, what you mean. Yeah, I know mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I believe the medium, uh, like if you take the middle, like average level of Russian fighters and any others, yeah, I, like Russians and the former USSR, yeah, for sure, like it's probably yeah. strongest in the world. Oh my God, when yeah. you count the former USSR, right? If you put all those countries yeah. in there, I mean, oh, it's Kazakhstan, just... Kyrgyzstan. Yeah, Russia, right. Ukraine, crazy. Belarus, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I believe the first of, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's mix of reason. Maybe poor is reason too. You know, when you're poor, you're a little bit more aggressive. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, it's very, very competitive because many people, for example, in Dagestan, it's uh, like I'm wrestler, my my friend wrestler, my brother, my grandma wrestler, my dog wrestler, like my <laughs> my my neighbor dog wrestler, like everybody wrestle. <laughs> so it's it's just part of culture, part of like how they live in, and. Uh, also, we used to have a very good uh, USSR school in the past. The mm -hmm. uh, sports oh, sure. school. Yeah, sure. We had a great system because everything was for free. It's still most of things for free. It's very, it's everybody, uh, can, everybody can afford it, kind of. It's getting worse, but mm, still not that bad like maybe in some other places. Like you don't have, like most of uh, schools, like Olympic schools, you don't have to pay. Like they even supported you in, in Russia. With, yeah, especially if you show result, they supported mm -hmm. you. They give you money. They want to invest in you. Yeah, they invest in you. Yeah, uh, they're funny because some some Russians not appreciated. They even think like, oh, in, in the West it's much better. They they never know that the what in USSR it's oh sorry in USA it's it's very possible if you like professional fighter and also you have a job <laughs> at yeah. the same time. Right, yeah, right. In Russia it's something like. What? What are you talking? I never work in Russia. I mm. never work in Russia. I always was a full time fighter until I moved here. Like I never worked. When was uh -huh. your first fight? How old were you? Uh, two thousand two. I was ten. Yeah. You were ten. Ten years old. Yeah. <laughs> that was your first fight. Yeah, that was my first fight. Was that uh, kickboxing? Yeah, that was. Good. I actually did kickboxing for my whole life. Uh, I well, I moved to USA exactly for MMA. That was the reason why I moved to USA for the kickboxing. No, for MMA. Uh, for MMA. For MMA. For MMA, yeah. So your first fight was at 10? Yes. And then it was just cr constant? Yeah, I never stopped. Yeah. So I how many fights do you think you've been in total? I mean, not not just... I think over than 200 for sure. Over 200. Yeah. I got to say, man, your face looks great. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I mean, it does. Good you school. Volgograd kickboxing school, one <laughs> of the best in the world. Yeah. <laughs> God, My defense damn. not that bad. Wow, I didn't know that. Still not perfect. Over 200 <laughs> fights. 
Wow. So um, have you met Khabib? Yeah, I'm actually, sorry, I keep saying that wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I actually met him in uh, AKA here in the USA. What's he like? I don't know. He he was super nice. Like yeah. nice, polite. Yeah, I don't know. Nice the, Russian, the Russians give each other kind of a head nod. I, I heard like, hey, in up? Russia he's a little bit different, but I don't know. I never seen him in Russia. I seen him in the USA and he was super nice. And he has brothers doing well, right? I mean, like, it's a huge team. I think yeah. he has, like, around, like, 40 cousins or whatever. <laughs> but it's it's a part of Muslim culture in the uh, In Dagestan? I mean, uh, all, all... All of the caucus. Yeah, like, they... Even, like, if it's, like, four or five times step brother, they mm -hmm. still count it as a family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You know, I lived in Turkey when I was a kid, and uh, wrestling was big there. A lot, the, wrestling, wrestling. Not MMA, of course, at that time, but, but it seemed like they all wrestled. Like every time I look, like there was like a little wrestling thing. So I think you're right. I think some cultures, it is it is the deal. So Chechnya, I was watching a good documentary and it looked at the Chechnyan fighters and it looked like their their leader, right? The Chechnyan leader was yes. like really doing all he could to raise these fighters up and reward them for good. Are you familiar with that or what's going on there? Yeah, the you know Russia invests uh, a lot of money there because there was a war, civil mm -hmm. war I'm familiar. there, yeah. and uh, after the like everything came pretty much okay. Quite, uh, Russia invests a lot of money, and uh, I mean, he did a lot of things for his republic. I'm not sure mm -hmm. what he did good or not, but seems like they raise uh, like bunch of fighters, good fighters. Yeah, yeah. It's tough people, like all, like all, all Caucasus. They're always that's tough. People. That's tough country, man. They they all tough. That's tough. No, I mean, like, I think it's I think they represent their land. That's tough land. Um, you know, it shows them driving. It's dry, mm -hmm. barren. It looks like it's the kind of place when it gets hot, it gets hell hot. <laughs> and when it gets cold, it gets freezing cold. You know what I mean? And that could probably all in the same day. It looked like a, that's a tough geography, you know? Yep. Uh, and, uh, this, uh, I, I think it's pretty hard to grow some cultures there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, most they do, it's uh, probably animals. They raise the uh, That's right. Animals. They're uh, yes. herding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty, I believe it's tough area, but it's also beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. And uh, some people there, they, yeah, they tough. They a little bit different, strange. Maybe a little bit behind the. If you take like the civilization, how we usually see like West civilization, for example. But I mean, they, it's still beautiful people. I think they might be just like also victim of stereotypes. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. Do, do they do they go to Moscow much? Yeah, they do. I, What's a culture I, shock? I'm. What, what are you talking I mean, about? if There's the caucus the same people. Country. Yeah, we, we, Dagestan is part of Russia. I know, but don't they yeah. like like they seem so different culturally? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like especially where I grew up, we never like separate us. Like I mean, if you're Russian, if if, if like for example, Habib, he's Russian. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter where he's from. He's Russian. He has a Russian citizenship. He can live wherever he want. Nobody care. <laughs> Nobody cared. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I thought there sometimes might be some... some. No, sometimes we have some like uh, I mean, because we have that here, by the way. Like, you know, some of the people in some of our fancier cities, they see people from the country. No, uh, yeah. And, yeah, like everywhere. We yeah. have a little bit, maybe a little bit worse because it's a different nationality. Sometimes mm -hmm. like if, you know, some people could be nationalistic and always find a reason to hate each other. But the, the OK, let's go back. I'm, I'm not living in Russia already for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything right now changing very fast, especially oh, because pandemic, mm -hmm. all these things. I, and I can't say what exactly happened right now. but. The, the way how I grew up, I don't know. I never really separated. Yeah, we have some like, you know, I mean, some some situation like, oh, I'm I'm Russian, I'm Slavic Russian. Look at me. And yeah, yeah, so, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm like Dagestani, like blah blah. I'm Always Siberian. Was, yeah, I'm <laughs> Siberian. Whatever it is. Yeah, but it, it's not that bad. It's more just like, yeah, whatever. More for teenagers. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So usually like adult. Like normal growing man. Yeah, they're man. fine. They're, they're we're all Russian. Yeah, we're, yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it's it's Who hard knows? to see. Yeah. Fedor, did you ever meet him? Yeah. Any good stories there? Uh, yeah, it's actually interesting. You know, yeah. when you see Fedor, he always like super serious. Like, really? Calm. Yeah, he does. Yeah, on TV. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, never the, smiles. The first time I met him, we just shook a hands and um, pretty much said nothing. Just took a picture, and later, accidentally, we went to the uh, like restaurant. And we were first there, and he probably sneak away from the crowd too, and we like just kind of catch each other like eye to eye, <laughs> and we was freezing. We were we were with my friend. We were freezing and like whoa, it's further. And uh, we, we were younger, and I, he 
was a super big name yeah 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 at, at this time and we're like oh freezing and he just like starts smiling like, oh what's up <laughs> 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 he kind of probably like, expected already maybe it's not the first time happened to him people yeah. just freezing like, oh shit, yeah, what do you do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he said something to my friend because my friend uh, fought there yeah, he, yeah i think he said you have to build some strength you have to work on your strength uh, is that what was that what he said to him <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah do some cardio yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh as some people figured mm-hmm. out Fedor is there and they jump jump on him start making uh, a picture oh and, god yeah, so he's a big deal there still in, yeah, in, yeah yeah of course um yeah his brother's a little interesting <laughs> he's kind of riding that Fedor train if you know what i mean um uh, he's got a great record right does he have a pretty good winning record I don't know. I, I'm not, I can't say I really follow him, and especially for the last few years, he more famous like a like man who as a character, as a character, as a character, <laughs> not as a fighter. Dude, two hundred fights, man. So you came up as a kickboxer, and then you started kind of morphing into the boxing, or I mean, because you're just an amazing striker. You really are. I mean, <laughs> I, th- I think I told you this before, and I was watching your fight in. Um, uh, which one was it? It was was it not Dakota Bush, but it was the one where you won um, the Dana White. Mm. Yeah, it was uh, Duncan, Chris Duncan. Yeah, that's right, Duncan. And I remember watching that, and the way you swing, it reminds me of Tommy Hearns, mm. because you have like this whip like motion. I think it's because you're a lot longer than a lot of the fighters your weight, and so it, maybe it's more exaggerated because of the height differential. But man, you got this like whip, and it's just you got amazing striking, and so. You probably, how did you do as a striker when in your striking sports? You were a world champion, right? And how many world champions did you get? World championships? No, I, I won just uh, one, uh, like, I mean, one juniors mm-hmm. ju- when I w- was a junior uh, and one, uh, like, adult, like, man, man category, whatever it calls in English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. And that's it. I, I done with amateur kickboxing pretty quick and I started do pro fights. And uh, that was like, I don't know. So, that was okay. Like I, I won eighteen fights. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I always fought in pretty high level. Yes, I okay. never fought like against like scrubs. Yes, yeah, scrubs. Yeah, <laughs> no, I always had a g- good fights. And uh, I mean, like yeah, uh, the where I'm from, like Volgograd Kickboxing School, it's very good. Like I was a sixth uh, world champ in my gym. Right now we have like probably eight. Really? Yeah, something like this. Yes, and uh, when I moved mm-hmm. here. Who I, I start work with Joey Rodriguez a lot on my yeah. striking. Yes, so on my grappling, it's most Uriah. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, I'm still working with other guys too, but that's most who I work with. So, so, so you moved here. So this is pretty amazing. This is like why I am just you know um, so taken with your story because you are doing well, right? And um, in Russia as a striker, and kickboxing, and you kind of knew, okay, I can't get to the next level. Right, I need to take it to the next level. So, was there a so there was some point where you said, "I'm going to be a pro fighter," right? And I need to go to the United States to do it. You didn't speak English, right? Or is that the story? Uh, I thought I did, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you did. So you just like packed up the bag and told you know your wife, "Hey, I'm going to go get this. Just trust me." Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. just now it sounds yeah, not that, not I know. That crazy. it sounds scary now, right? <laughs> you're like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> um, and you just came to the U.S. and did you know where you're going, or are you just gonna seek out Uriah wherever Uriah was? Was that the plan? Yeah, yeah, that was the plan. Uh, I, I was looking for Uriah, and uh, my first trip, I, I was thinking only just make a fight, but I realized pretty quick it's not that easy, and the MMA it's much harder than I expected. Mm-hmm. I mean, the reason why I moved to USA was only MMA. I just sat and uh, I, my, I, I already had the daughter at this time. Mm-hmm. And I understand that I couldn't make enough money uh, to live in really well. I, 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 I was able to make okay money for a little bit more than survival. But I think uh, uh, like because I'm doing that and I still was young enough, maybe I should take more because I, I used to work my ass off very hard <laughs> and it's not fair mm-hmm. like I, I'm already in high level fighter and I Need to get I paid. believe yeah I, I, I'm good business mm-hmm. <laughs> I should be paid more mm-hmm. and I realized them in May growing it's, it's getting yeah, yeah. bigger and bigger and I think okay I, I know who I am 
And if I want to come like fight on a high level, I like w- why it should be like something, just something. No, it should be the best one. It should be UFC. Mm-hmm. And my friend, uh, I it's funny, I never follow MMA. One of my friends, he was a big fan of Team Alpha Male. And he explained, like he gave me hundred reasons why it should be only like Team Alpha Male. I have no choice except the Team Alpha Male. <laughs> yeah, so you just came to the United yeah, States. Yeah, I, okay, I trust him. I trust, okay, okay. Like... And I, I also, a few of my friends, uh, one guy, uh, he's a boxer, Sergey Lipinius, he used to live in LA. Mm-hmm. He helped me to stay in LA for a while to understand what's going on here. And mm-hmm. one of my other friends, he used to live in Walnut Creek. And uh, I stayed with him for a few weeks until I uh, met Uriah, paid him and started living in the mm-hmm. fighter house. So, and the reason, it's pretty smart. I mean, you're, you you took this in a very um, a very thoughtful manner because you sought, you sought out Uriah because he's a wrestler and Team Alpha Male does a lot of grappling and that's your weak spot. Now, I, I don't mean weak, I mean, but yeah, relative, weak. <laughs> rel- <laughs> relative to not, your striking. Not anymore, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> relative to your striking, right? That's what you had to improve on if you were going to be as successful as you can be. So that was really smart. Um, so you showed up and gave him a hat and said, hey, yeah, I used I'm to, here. Uh, no, I bought the whole training, mm-hmm. like everything. Like I become the full member and start training <laughs> really? like every day. Yeah, you just really. joined like a dude at the gym? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, because Uriah wasn't there. Oh. Yes, and for two weeks, I, I keep going back and forth just mm-hmm. until I met him. And when I met him, I said, like, hi, Uriah. Uh, oh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got I to gotta figure that. Okay, so you just... Like a dude at the gym, you just joined the gym. Yeah. And you just kept waiting until you saw the owner. Yeah, I bought the one gi. <laughs> yeah, I bought the gi. I love yes. that. Yes. And I, I kept waiting for him every day. I took all practice wherever it's possible. <laughs> How long would you stay there working out? Like Yeah, like I believe I will I was waiting for two weeks, something like this. Oh wow. Yes. Yeah, and finally when I met him, yeah, I explained him everything. Yes, and he said, "Okay, cool." Let's and he probably it. saw your record, right, and said, oh, "Okay, this guy's for I real." I don't think I, I, you know, I think this he's just a super nice guy, and he has seen like so many crazy people who want to be a fighter. <laughs> right. He says, "Okay, whatever." <laughs> like, yeah. let's try. <laughs> <laughs> but when they saw you strike, they must have known. Okay, this guy's, you know. Yeah, probably he. It's better to ask him. But I, I, I actually heard he said that he realized I'm high level striker. But uh, it's actually maybe a reason why he never forced me to do MMA because he understand if I'm doing everything right and possibly could be a big fighter. But if I was fighting right away, mm-hmm. someone probably just some beat me and that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to get off to that start. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so how did the grappling go? Cause I heard Joey Rodriguez. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw some things where he said you were just one of the most amazing strikers he's ever seen. Um, when he saw you, you know, in the gym, but how did, how did it go with the grappling in the beginning? Who'd they put you oh, up in against? The oh my. That was terrible. Yeah. That, like, <laughs> my very, very first uh, MMA sparring, I actually didn't realize there was MMA sparring. I thought it's kickboxing sparring. I felt relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Like one guy who's not like even wrestler, he just like was doing MMA okay. Mm-hmm. He took me down and hold me on the floor like all around. <laughs> like a little and, brother. Uh, yeah, that was <laughs> terrible. And he lighter than me, smaller than oh, me. Oh, really? Yeah. He was, ragdolled you. Yeah. Uriah, I think my first grappling round with Uriah, I think he choked me about like 15 times. <laughs> 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 that was terrible. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> you learned. Yeah. How, how long did it take you, do you think, to finally get your mind around what it takes, you know, to be a, to be a successful grappler in this MMA business? Right after you write choking me 15 times, I said, I'm <laughs> ready. Like, um, yeah. Let's go, man. <laughs> you know, I think the reason why I'm in UFC right now, because I never really like overthinking of that. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I trust Uriah. I know Uriah know uh, about my, like me, more than my, myself. Also Joey, like my, kind of my coaches, my mm-hmm. team, but the most of Uriah and Joey. And uh, mm-hmm. I just stopped thinking. Right now, I actually living in the room. I have everything what I need. All I have to do, just listen to the right people and keep working hard. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> well, um, you lost, your only loss is a split decision. I couldn't find video of it, man. I was trying to find video. Well, well this is an amazing fight you should find. Yeah, I gotta fight. find it with Starks, right? Or, yeah, Will Stark. Yeah. Uh, bum me out. So one loss, but it's a split. So, that's- so it's a, I believe it's still, I still believe it's one of my best fights. Really? Yeah. So you got so you start getting your game down and Uriah says, Okay, I think you're ready here. And so, you know, you start getting your fights. And I saw you you were fighting in Legacy? Or? LFA? It's, LFA. I'm yeah. not sure it's uh, Yeah. Like, yeah, LFA. Yeah, yeah. My first uh, 
No, my very first fight was in some Indian reservation. Which one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I represent some ne- next to LA. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Tachi? No. I'm not sure. King Cage or something like this. I, I'm not remembering. <laughs> <laughs> that, actually, we just, that was terrible. We, we sat in a minivan, mm-hmm. drove all the way up to this uh, the reservation. reservation, fought. I haven't taken a shower, nothing was said. And went you drove all the way back? Yeah. <laughs> no hotel? Yeah, no, no. No locker room? Yeah, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Did they pay you? No, I think you're right. I paid to find an opponent for me. Oh, uh, okay. Because uh, I actually had a real struggle to find an f- opponent. I think I had the more than 17 canceled. Why was that? Appear. For your first fight? Yeah, yeah. Nobody w- 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 like going to fight me. Actually, I I believe people start fighting me only because of pandemic. There's no way. Yeah, yeah. We have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like we have a crazy story in uh, South Dakota. My first tell of mm-hmm. that's supposed to be my first tell of a fight. The guy ran away from hotel. Yeah, on the on, next day on the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, why did he wait till then? I have no idea. That's why I was so mad. Like, just say no before. Why right, you, right. Why you accept the fight and doing this crazy thing? I, I understand when people won't fight. Yeah. Like, I see, for example, yeah, like, even at this time when we were looking for the fight, I understand that I, uh, I, I used to have a struggle. That's why I pick any fights. Mm-hmm. But... Technically, yeah, I won't fight a guy like me for one thousand dollars. Of course, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, yes. right. and but still, if you accept the fight, okay, like finish. That's 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 a business. You should be responsible. Uh, that's a good story. <laughs> so you and Uriah must be pretty close now. Is he like your brother? Yeah, uh, or dad? <laughs> I think I said it in some interviews very well. Like if we talk about if we're just hanging out, yeah, he's my brother. He's my family. If we're working, like on a fight or whatever he's my manager if we're training he's my coach yeah (laughs) that's not bad that's not bad so um so you went on to the contender series you did incredibly well that was a great fight that was like dana white said that that was one of the best rounds he's ever seen right yeah that was actually cool (laughs) (laughs) i I, I, I kept i kept saying before uh, this contender series like I, i i'm not really worried that much what dana white going to say because i know he's businessman Whatever, everything good for business, he he going to say. But when he said that, uh, yeah, that was something like I felt. Yeah, yeah, you. you should have. Yeah. <laughs> was he cool? Did you talk to him at all, or does that? that not really that much. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So um, then you moved out of that, and then you have your you had your first real test against uh, Dakota Bush. By the way, that's a good name. Got a good name, Dakota Bush. Special nickname. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I won't say it here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I couldn't believe that he took that nickname. <laughs> probably funny dude <laughs> yeah so um that was a hell of a fight man that liver shot that was amazing so i had boss rootin on here and boss talked about i don't know phil what did he say every night he would practice that liver shot a thousand times a night yeah she thought he was insane because he stood in front of a mirror just practicing it <laughs> over and over and over um you do anything like that uh, yes, of course I, but not on the mirror. It's actually interesting what he's saying. He mm-hmm. was practicing on the mirror because I need this feeling that the main part of this, um, the finish, this punch, you have to feel how you go under the ribs. It's like very important. There's like two points, like here mm-hmm. and here, outside and inside. When there's pretty small ribs, and if you push it, it's uh, creating a very bad pressure on the liver, and this makes like anything worse. I, I don't really care how tough you are, but this part and this part, it's very hard to go through that. If I'm if I'm like point the right, like right place. But your point, but you know exactly where you need to hit in the angle. Yeah, I try. In the usual in the fight situation, it's harder because you try and hit really hard, and you always miss. You hit the rib. Bit. Yeah, being honest, I'm like monster of. Uh, liver shots in the uh, during the training. Like I, I, I rock people even like when I touch like that. Really? Yeah, yeah because it's right point. But when you fight, you kind of getting excited. You want to like go yeah. as hard as you can, and you always miss. That's why I was so happy when I finally. Oh my the right god! Yeah. That was a twice right spot. If you watch on a slow motion, even with right punch, I already uh, put on the right spot. He was already hurt. Like yeah, the, the after right punch. And right right punch. Again. <laughs> Yeah, because it takes him a little while, right? To like for why is that? Have you ever figured that out? Why does when you do the liver shot, it takes him like a couple of seconds? Uh, because the uh, liver get bigger when you put the too much pressure, it get bigger and this breaks. Uh, you know this 
the around the liver we have like mm -hmm. capsule or mm -hmm. what it is and it's breaking it and it, uh, with the time when it's happened and you feel you it's not that quick uh, and also the liver shot is most intelligent shot because look if you if you like a finish guy like that it's a uh, 30 seconds or one minute of a shame and you're good yeah. you can fight same day yeah. but if it's right to the chin or something like this it could be terrible yeah that's why like the liver shot the best one you tell, <laughs> so you tell them later i did you a favor yeah yeah exactly <laughs> dude so who who taught you that shot I don't know you, because I, I I doing it for so long. Yeah, you just I'm, picked it up. I think it's from Volgograd school. Yeah, but uh, so we we also did the, a lot of no. I look the thing is, since I start work with Joey, Joey uh, proved my power a lot. Oh, he did. He he, he changed my uh, stance. Uh, he likes we start work a lot on uh, little things like to make sure I bring my hands back. You know, like all these little things which only high level coach could see. And uh, we keep working on the uh, meets a lot. I used to have struggles sexually before. I have no like my own coach because we have we, we used to have a big team, mm -hmm. and uh, I never really had my own coach who always hold the meets for me, and know me that well like Joey do. And uh, that's actually one more reason why, I, I, what I have like six victories and five finishes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I know and, they're all finishes. I, yes, and I have uh, two boxing fights here in, in USA. One finish and one uh, decision but i rocked the guy uh by jab by in <laughs> professional boxing and the, the guy mexican <laughs> with a jab <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes and uh, I, I start feeling it i i yeah. as seems i start working with joe i start feel like i'm, I'm punching harder yeah. and now i work with darren on my strength mm -hmm. and conditioning mm -hmm. and i also feel like i'm so much stronger and wrestle mm -hmm. everything feel great and uh the, if we talk about the liver shot remember when i said these two points this is from my, my hometown school like you point here, people usually bring the elbow inside, and now you can go over. That's why you like mix it, boom, boom. You know, oh. who doing that really well. It's um, you, he used he used to do that really well. It's uh, oh my god, there's even a movie about him. I think calls Fighter. Uh, he used to fight uh, against uh, 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 Mickey Ward, Mickey Ward, Mickey Ward. Uh, okay, Mickey Ward. yeah, Mickey he, Ward. He did it really well. Like pam pam, this mix. Uh. And if you go outside, people pull it back. Oh, then it opens that. Inside open. Boom. I never realized there were two ways to get the liver. Yeah, but it's more. I uh, it's, I'm not sure it came from me personal, or maybe I saw that. But I do it it's a lot with both hands. Uh -huh. Like that's what I did the last fight. When you use the right hand, he like bring it in, but uh, Dakota tried to punch me counter punching but he didn't realize the right already was bad yeah and that's why the his punch wasn't powerful it's, he already felt bad and he like yeah. <laughs> but the, when you use the both hands it's even faster ba -pum. but it's a little bit dangerous you can get counter oh uh, yeah because you use one boom, boom, it's a little bit safer mm -hmm. but yeah. you just you, you, i think you felt you had the green light there right? yeah and i actually love to use both hands especially against the salpa damn yeah and I, I noticed in the in the contender series the guy took you down right and, I was a little worried for you there because he had your back, but you got out of it well. So yeah, I guess a, you it's my normal feeling, uh, the, my normal situation for me in training in Team Alpha Male. They're all trying <laughs> to take you down. <laughs> they all able to. <laughs> and I, actually, I used to work with Uriah a lot. I feel comfortable on the uh, ground. Yeah. For me, probably harder to stop take down than being on the ground. Because mm. I feel comfortable. I I actually have a lot of knowledge. Uh, I, I, I'm able to finish people. I just not doing it yet because uh, not not enough experience. Yeah. So I know we're going back to something else, but I just remembered when I was younger, um, I thought one of the greatest athletes I'd ever seen was a Russian wrestler, Alexander Karelin. Mm. Do you remember this guy? Of course. I actually met him. You did? Yeah. That He's guy huge. was the scariest <laughs> looking human I've ever seen. His head had muscles. Like literally his forehead had muscles. I think we know why. But I mean his forehead had muscles. That guy just mowed through the Olympics like every year. So how did you meet him? Oh, it's funny. I met him accidentally in a railway station. <laughs> and we, we have a picture with a whole my team and him. And yeah. he, I think he actually hugged the all team same time. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was a dude who would like carry cows, you know. For he had these crazy workouts, yeah. man. He would like carry logs, carry like you know, I don't know, small donkeys. He was like just an amazing human being. Did he get into politics or what happened to that guy? 
Yeah, he, I think he's right now in government. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much like in Russia when you're so in Russia now. If you're famous athlete, you probably don't have much to do, or you have to go to politic or maybe military. But at least you have to do something if you want to keep making yeah, yeah. money, good money. So, so March twenty sixth, that's your next fight, right? Yes. Columbus, Ohio. You know, there's going to be a big crowd because there ain't shit to do in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> so I think that thing's going to be packed. <laughs> um, Mark Diakis, Diakis. I'm not I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Sure yeah. Also, what are you yeah. thinking? Oh, he, he seems cool. a really good fighter. He's good. Yeah, yeah he's, he's been fighting for a while. And it should be very yeah, uh, in, entertainment because he's a striker too. Oh, I yeah. love that strike on strike. That's gonna be good. Yeah, that's gonna be. Who else is on your card? Anybody? It's actually oh Max Griffin's Max Griffin, on that. Yeah, yeah. And maybe possibly even Josh Emmett. Oh, oh, I'd love to see that. I would pay you to go to Columbus, Ohio to see you three fight. Yeah. Well, oh, my God. I'm not sure. i just saying that. For, about Griffin, okay. I heard I get it. for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw Max. I know Max yeah. is going to be fighting there. Oh, my God. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's an exciting fighter, too. <laughs> and this is it. I mean, he's fighting Magny, right? So he, he's Max could find himself working into the top 10. Yes, and I'm so happy he worked with us too a lot. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have a great sparring partner too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's 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 wild, man. I love that guy. So um yeah, so March 26th. Um looking forward to that fight. Um where do you where do you see yourself after that victory? Where do you, where do you see yourself in a couple of years? Where do you want to be? Mm, I'm not sure in about a couple of years, but uh, I would like to finish my first contract this year. Uh, because I have like oh, is it four, this year? Four, four fights. Yeah, I want to finish it in the, in this year. Mm -hmm. I already did two. Oh, mm -hmm. sorry, I did one. It's about to do a second one, and maybe I need after this, I need one more, and I can change my contract. Oh, that's, that's right. That's my plan for this year. Okay. But for next, I don't know, four maybe three years, I would like to make like more money than I need. <laughs> because that's, that's my main goal right now in the MMA. Yes. <laughs> make more money than you need. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Here's my budget, and I want to make this much. Yeah. Um, um, hey, so what was your biggest shock coming here to the United States from Russia? Like, what, what did you go, hmm, that's interesting. Uh, you know, what caught you off guard about the United States, how we live, how we do things? Like, if, being honest, I never really was overthinking about that. I had a goal. Like that's all so you were, you're yeah. just focused on. Yeah, I was focused on that. I never, I think because I also travel a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah. Like when was I was nothing. a fighter, yeah. Like I never was that excited about that. You know, some people, especially who live in a poor spot of country, mm -hmm. they always think, you know, somewhere is so perfect. The world is mm -hmm. so amazing. But the, I already know it's not like that. Like everybody, ha like all places in this world has a good part and bad part. Yeah. Like there's never perfect part. Maybe on the heaven. I don't know if mm. you believe in God. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, my, that's why I, I was never like overthinking of it. I, of course, that was cool. That was a great experience, especially when I start travel a little bit. Mm -hmm. When I met the friends. When I realized, uh, especially uh, like Sacramento, right now is my like my second home, and I met so many amazing people here. I surprised how many great people in USA, which is we, because we still have a stereotype what in, 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 in USA it's all about money mm -hmm. uh, and I'm all about money, but yeah. I'm not an American. <laughs> 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 but American people not. Like there's mm -hmm. so many people just like, just good people. Just, just working very folks. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Just, mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's, this part kind of surprised me. Mm -hmm. And also I never realized uh, how huge difference between Californian people and Kansas people. Oh <laughs> yeah, right. New York uh, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so different. Yeah, okay. Yet, well, you're yeah. gonna find out about Ohio people pretty soon. Yeah, I think yeah, they're a little we'll different. We'll this the weather. I mean, I think the weather is probably what you love, right? Maybe also weather. Too, yeah, I think yeah. you love the weather out here. You know, in Kansas, people like a lot of people won't uh, understand my English even. <laughs> yeah, when we've been there, uh, Joey used to translate for them. <laughs> no jokes. Just, really? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't understand you? Yeah, like a lot of them, maybe half. <laughs> cool. They always like look at me like. What? What <laughs> yeah, we can't. We can't. We have to apologize for Kansas. Um, March twenty sixth, Slava. 
you've been you've been amazing. I think you're going to be one of the next big things in the UFC. I honestly do. I think your fighting style is incredibly exciting. I think you're a very very interesting person. I think you're the type type of fighter that uh, the UFC is going to want to you know see succeed. Um, and it'll be up to you to win the fights. But given your work ethic and the fact that you left your family in Russia and said you guys hold tight. I'll, I'll give you a call <laughs> and you did it and you freaking did it. So you're the kind of guy that achieves what he needs to achieve. And I want to thank you for spending this time with us today. Right. Thank you too. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you.